So I've had a 3D printer for the last eight months. So what have I learned about making bits like this? And all this down here. Stay tuned and I'll explain what I mean. Well, good morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, it's been a while, I know that, and uh, life does sometimes get in the way and we can't avoid that sometimes and I've not been able to devote as much time to the layout as I would have liked, but here we are again. Now, the purpose of this video is to actually explain what I've learned over these last um, eight months about making different shapes or different pieces. So, for example, the side pieces for that compared to say these smaller details down here okay right welcome back now as you can see i've got uh, tinkercad open here and if you remember my first video i went through some basics on how to use that now i'm not going to do that in this particular video because this is like i said before is a follow-on um, what things I've learned in the last eight months. What you'll notice is these are the um, billboards that are put onto Piccadilly Station. So they're only, they're only what, about 15 millimetres high. They're not very much at all um, because a person's only around about 12 millimetres and these are only slightly bigger. But what I've learned is that this, this thickness here, a minimum uh, of 0.5. Now, if you try and make it any smaller than that, and it probably would be a tad smaller than that, I found that Cura, the program who actually creates the, the, uh, pro, the format for the 3D printer, it won't recognise it. Now, I know somebody <coughs> did say that I could change the settings in Cura, which we'll look at in a bit, but I still couldn't work it out what to change or whatever. But I have found that if you keep it to 0.5 or 0.55 in layer height and certainly the width, then the printer can cope with that. Now, before you, you will see I've got some of the steps and I've not been able to do anything, um, to be fair, over this last uh, few weeks, purely because of the circumstances. It's just been impossible to get to do anything at all. So all these steps are still in this state and these are still the handrails that will go on them. But what I want to point out to you is this. Now, you've got this like webbing, if you like. And that's really quite soft okay obviously that needs to be cut off but on this one you'll see that is a lot thicker now why have i done this one with this and this one with this on it it's all to do with the fine details now if like i said before i've made these railings to a minimum of 0.5 millimeters now this area here is a big large surface okay and you could say i could print that without this without this brim on here and i could but what i was finding is that the edge or some edges were literally just curling up now if you've had a 3d printer you probably realize that is a bit of a thing and the reason for that is because of the cooling rates of the filament now the 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 filament is warmer at the bottom than it is at the top so therefore the top is contracting a lot quicker than the bottom is why because the bed on the 3d printer is heating right now you might be looking at that and thinking what in the name of sanity is that well that's those little um, oil drip trays that go in among in the track and there's just a load of them all side by side so I'm going to print all those off and each one will be an individual. Now I'm going to use a brim for that because it's a big long flat object and it will stick to the bed an awful lot easier than what 
those would. Those wouldn't stick to the bed very easily without, without the raft, whereas that would. It'll have a bigger surface area to uh, stay put, if you like. Okay, so you click on that and you get this settings menu come up and you've got this slider bar going down the side. Now, if you scroll almost to the bottom, there's material, speed, travel, cooling, support. Now, it's this area here, build plate adhesion. And you'll notice it says four things. So you can either have no, no support whatsoever or no um, build plate thingy bob whatsoever. So I, like I said before, I could do this without the brim. So you can have a brim, which is exactly that. You can have a raft, which is for that. And that's good for really small, tiny objects, which will literally just can pop off the raft. Um, I found the brim, you do have to cut it off with the scalpel. Or a skirt. Now, the skirt is literally a line drawn around the outside of the object. So if I show you on this, um, if I... If you imagine this uh, brim wasn't here, it would literally just draw a line all the way around the outside a couple of times and then start printing. But the problem of curling up still exists. So to be honest with you, I don't know what the skirt is for unless it's some kind of registration mark. But I've not found it of any use whatsoever. I like I said, I use the brim and the raft. The graph for small objects, the brim, if it's got a little bit of surface area on the back and it will stick to the, the bill plate. Right. So you can see the printer has now started off on its journey now, printing off those um, oil drip trays. And um, this is obviously just printing the brim ready for that. And I will need to cut each one off the brim when they're ready, okay? Now, what I want to point out here to you now is that if you remember the printer from before, it had a head on it like that, okay? And then there was a tube, i.e. that one, which ran all the way around like that. I'm trying not to touch the head as it's moving. And there was, in this port corner here, there was what we call an extruder. Now that's only a bit of it, um, but what you'll immediately notice is that's made of plastic. Now the idea of that is that you've got two pulleys which are doing that. One's driven and one's not so that the filament is literally just pulled from the top and it's pushed through the housing down to what we call the hot end in this bit down here. Now, when that broke, um, what I found was that it wasn't, the bed was moving, the head was moving, but nothing was coming out of the hot end. So there was no plastic or filament being pushed through. So it wasn't printing anything. It was literally just moving around and doing a little dance, if you like. So that got me thinking, what do I need to do to make that successful? Well, I decided as part of that to change the whole setup to what we call direct drive. Now, if you're any good with nuts and bolts and for the older amongst us, the Meccano, um, if you remember that, you will be able to do this. Even the wiring, it's, it's fairly simple. There's a, a couple of bolts to undo underneath here and every wire is, well, you're told where to put it. It's a very clear wiring diagram. But then I found that this thing broke again because that was attached to the back of that. So that red thing is the same thing as this, the extruder. And so when it happened again, I thought, well, I can't keep buying extruders. So looking on the internet, looking on looking at videos on YouTube, everyone was recommending using a metal um, extruder. I'll take you around the back and I'll show you exactly what I mean. That, met, that red thing moving back and forth there, that is the extruder. And hopefully you might be able to make out the pulleys and the, the drive that I've just been explaining to you. 
it allows the filament to be literally just pulled through okay now the problem being is you've got a very large spring in there which puts the whole arm and the assembly under huge amounts of pressure so by doing that the plastic is just not um, suitable i.e the plastic extruder just wasn't strong enough but since i've put this one on this one is considerably stronger and it was about 12 to 15 pounds from amazon Some things weren't sticking very well to the bed. Now this is the bed. Now if you've got an Ender 3 V2 you will also notice the bed doesn't look like that and you might realise I've turned it upside down. Why? Because the other side is knobbly and at first everything stuck to it with no problems whatsoever and it was all beautiful and worked very very well. But somebody said on the internet put glue onto the bed from a glue stick i.e okay other brands are available obviously but when i put it on i spread it all over and mushed it around it actually made the situation an awful lot worse and i ended up having to get it all off now gratefully those are PVA so just put took this off clip at the front clip at the back and put it under the tap and I was able to get it all off with no problems but it didn't make it it still didn't stick to the bed very very easily so I also heard that people were suggesting getting a glass bed so I thought well this is glass Let's flip it over and since I've done that I haven't had any problems with it do have to keep this clean and you look at mine it is a bit fingerprinty at this area but I promise you in the middle and the far side is actually spotlessly clean why because you clean it down with isopropyl alcohol right the next thing I come across was the fact that the head this was literally wobbling about and this um, was wobbling about now on the bottom of down the bottom here Hopefully you can see these wheels here, not this one, but these two wheels there and there. Now on the bottom, they are, they've got some hex nuts. Now, many of them will literally just tighten the wheel into the base here, as you're going up, but a couple of them are on a cam. So in other words, when you turn the wheel, it actually tucks it tighter into the guide rail which runs along the top along here if that is making any sense bringing you around the back here again again you can see the the hex nuts there and there's the hex bolts going into the front that was the one if i'm remembering correctly that i turned it and it brought the guide wheels tighter into the guide rails it didn't just tighten this to this so that's it And the last thing is just making sure that the bed is absolutely level. Um, if this isn't level, what I was finding is sometimes you get filament come out on one side and not on the other because it's too close to the nozzle this side. So if it's, if it's not printing and it does print in other parts, chances are the bed's not level and you've not given enough clearance for the, for the hot ends to actually put anything down. But equally, if it's too far away, the plastic will have cooled down before it actually sticks to the bed. So it's, it's all a trial and error. Now, when I first decided to go for 3D printing, I just bought a cheap to mid-range um, filament, which was this one. All right. Now, you might notice I've not used this for quite a while. And why? because everything that I was printing with this was stringing over. In other words, you end up with a load of webbing, which is literally going across all the high points. And you end up having to pick off or cut off all the webbing first, 
and it just didn't didn't do anything for me. It's it was a waste of time, waste of money, and I just looked at different filaments and found this one. Now I know this image is on its side, but what I found was this particular brand is matte and matte filament. It's not shiny at all. So the models look much better when they come out the printer straight off. But also on the advert, it said less stringing. And uh, it really does. Um, I'm not saying it's 100% string free, but it's certainly considerably less stringing than the one I've just showed you. So I would highly recommend that particular brand and the matte filament. I think it comes in uh, black, white, grey, blue, red. I think there's green, brown. I'm not sure. It's basic colours, but the grey is perfectly good for me. I may choose them black at some point. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that little um, what have I learned over the past few months. And yes, I would say if you are thinking about getting a 3D printer or you've got one, um, it's brilliant. They're just absolutely amazing, the things that they can produce, as you've seen in the past. You know, some of these things I'd never be able to dream of being able to make by a traditional um, scratch bill means. You know, I just couldn't do it. So from that point of view, they are absolutely amazing. But I also get the fact that some of you may be thinking, well, it's a bit scary. What happens if it goes wrong? What do I do? Um, am I going to be able to change the parts? Well, some of you, some people obviously are more adept to getting in there and, you know, messing about with nuts and bolts and things like that. I get that. I really do get that. Um, so I can understand some people being a little bit more fearful of the technology. And again, it's it's a thing you're just going to have to choose whether to or whether not to. But what I will say is I must have saved hundreds of pounds in printing costs. I must have. Or in, in things I've bought in buying things. I mean, even a little pack of these, if I can find them, if I was to buy what half a dozen in a pack, that would be easily a fiver. And, you know, you do that several times, you, you're building up hundreds and hundreds. So, you know, you have to, it's all swings and roundabouts and you have to weigh up the um, idea of it. Um, but it is a bit like um, owning a classic car. Not that I've ever done that, but I've heard people say that the fantastic to have and to own and to be in and to drive and you, the experience is like no other. But when they go wrong, they're a massive headache. Now, I wouldn't say 3D printing is a massive headache, but you've got to be prepared to get in there and get stuck in, you know, and there's loads of support out there. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of um, eBay vid um, YouTube videos out there and particularly on the uh, end of three as well, which is what I've got. And other printers too, you know, so you just have to choose what you want to do. Um, I will be getting back on to building Piccadilly very, very shortly. Um, as a, a slight insight, um, I've, I have been ill um, over the past week or so, and there's been other things going on too. So my progress has um, come to a grinding halt. But um, when I feel a little bit on the, the better side, I will be getting back into making things, but just please just be patient. Um, I had somebody message me saying, when's the next video? Well, it'll come when it comes. I'm not going to say it will be here at this time. It's just not going to work like that. OK, and I'll catch you again very, very soon here on Piccadilly. Don't forget to click on the two videos that are appearing on your screen right now. And I hope you find them inspirational and also very entertaining. OK, take care then. Bye bye.